Greetings. This is Pastor Tim from Mellinger's Lutheran Church up on the hill in Shenick. And this is our Lenten midweek service. Welcome. Our theme this year is Created for Community. And today's topic is In Community with Those on the Margins. We worship today on this day in the season of Lent in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to heal the world and to gather those on the margins. Bring your healing power to us. May we extend your power and grace to those separated from their communities and those longing for a tangible sign of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Mark the fifth chapter beginning at the first verse 
They came to the other side of the sea, to a country of the Gerasenes, and when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. Met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke into pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of Man, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside was a great herd of swine that was feeding. And the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that happened. And they came to Jesus and they saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. And the very man who had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it, then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everybody was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. As I said, the theme for this year's services is created for community, and today's topic is community with those on the margins. I'd like to make two points regarding this topic and text from Mark, in which Jesus cures a man being possessed by demons. The first point is that all of us are actually more on the margins than we sometimes like to think. And the second point is that because we are all God's children and closer to the edge than we often like to admit, we should recognize that there are many people who are in fact even more marginalized than most of us and we need to help them and advocate for them for justice and equality for those who are completely left out and often the victims of violence and other forms of prejudice and hatred. The man in the gospel today was one of those people. While we have great power and hope in Christ and really have no need to fear anything, we nevertheless do and are constantly not living up to the potential of our role as Christian disciples because of the demons of fear or selfishness or vanity just plain ignorance. The phrase, there but for the grace of God go I, is a good one for us to remember as we try to separate ourselves from those other people, the outsiders, the scary ones, those other people, the ragtag vagabonds, the diseased in body, mind, and soul. We're a lot more like them than we often like to admit. People need to have hope and most are more frail than they often appear. If you can be someone who makes a difference by helping someone believe, then you're a success. No matter your station, your job, career, or lack of one, every day you can change someone's life. Exactly what did you or I do to 
to be born in the United States of America, as opposed to a place like perhaps Honduras, I know there, they, every day people live in constant fear of their lives from gangs and live in abject poverty where disease and the effects of terrible weather unmitigated by any government help due to corruption and greed. Did you choose to be born here? What great accomplishment have we achieved that gives us opportunities millions don't have? None, of course, is the basic answer. And even with our great resources and opportunities, we nevertheless find ways never to still be insecure and fearful and selfish. It's human nature. Yes, to be sure, we, you and I, are more on the margins than we admit. But we are all sinners saved only by the grace of Almighty God. Those who would, we, we would do well to remember this as we try to distinguish ourselves from those other people. Jesus Christ himself identifies with those other people in Matthew 25 when he says, if we don't help them, we're not helping him. But even as we recognize our own frailties and shortcomings, we need as disciples, as the hands and feet and void of, voice of Christ, called to help those in need and serve God through service to our fellow mankind, we need to recognize that as frail as we are, there are millions of people in worse shape on the margins, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for many reasons. There's your obvious demons, which are obviously recognizable, drugs, too much alcohol, sexual addictions, gambling, the love of money, violent behavior of all kinds, top the list of demons which possess people and prevent them from being the people God wants them to be. But people are marginalized and dehumanized for other reasons, economic reasons, for reasons of mental health issues and other forms of social isolation and discrimination and misguided, misinformed and hateful cultural reasons based on sinful opinions about race, nationality, politics, religious creed or gender. Called and commanded by Christ to be in community with and help these folks, we do also recognize with, that not only all, all God's people, all God's people, God's children, but there, but for the grace of God, go I. Every one of us struggles with problems and issues. Some people struggle more than others. But whether you're seriously addicted to some problem or just marginally inhibited, we're all sinners and need to be rescued by our Lord. Trying to save yourself from an addiction never works. A person needs support from others and most importantly needs Christ. The whole thing's scary. After the people saw what Jesus did, they asked him to leave town. They were scared. They were shocked and horrified, even though what Jesus did was a good thing. And it's frightening for us as well. Mark is the master of shocking tales. Mark was the first gospel written and is told almost as an eyewitness account of the amazing events in the life of Christ. Mark is stark. The word which occurs most in the gospel of Mark is the word immediately. Things happen fast and they're shocking. The actual original ending to the gospel of Mark was Mark 16, 8, which describes the women who saw the empty tomb. And Mark 16, 8 says, so they went out, they fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anybody for they were afraid that's the accident original ending to the first gospel there were written mark later it was added that the women went and told the disciples that jesus had risen from the dead as all the other gospels say no matter how shocking things are as we put our trust in christ we first must recognize that we are brothers and sisters to those on the margins that we are closer to the margins than we ourselves sometimes like to think, and then we can be empowered with the love of Christ to accept, respect, and care for those who are marginalized even more than we are. I'm 69 years old, and frankly, it's unbelievable to me how many people in our country are possessed by the demon of hatred, marginalizing other people, to see so many people in our country waving Nazi flags and attacking the Capitol wearing Camp Auschwitz t-shirts, Auschwitz of course being the concentration camp where so many of our Jewish brothers and sisters were murdered by the Nazis. It's unfathomable to me sometimes. I wonder sometimes my dad 
who served in World War II, what he would think if he saw this today. And make no mistake, just as surely as Jesus removed the demons from the man in today's text, it's our duty not to run from demons, but to, in the name of Christ, oppose and remove them. In Christ's name, as the hands and feet of Christ. To be sure, we are also in community with those people who hate. We're in community with all, all are God's children. We're in community with those despicable people who, who turn their hate into action and kill other people. We're in community with the people that they victimize. And we're in community with the perpetrators as well. They too are children of God, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Nevertheless, evil cannot be appeased. Evil must be opposed. As we are in community with those who perpetrate these deeds, we show our brotherhood in Christ by standing against their actions so that they can be the people who God called them to be. It's nice to say we want to be in community with people, but where are we when the bullets start to fly? Where's our commitment when standing with those on the margins is dangerous? It's dangerous to go into certain sections of cities to help. It's, more da it's dangerous too to be involved in social causes where you may be actually physically attacked by those who hate. We're called to be in community with those on the margins, not just in word, but in deed. Jesus didn't say to the man that he was in community with him. He showed him that he was in community with him by getting rid of the demons that were in him. Jesus didn't go up to the demons and say, let's talk about your point of view. Let's talk, maybe you have a good idea here. No, Jesus got rid of the demons in the man. One of the ways we care for those possessed by demons is to pray for them. But also, as we trust in Jesus, remove the demons as we can. To tell someone that they are wrong when they advocate hatred and violence is not being unchristian. Rather, to tell someone when they are wrong is our duty as a Christian. To care for a person with a demon, we have to oppose the demon. Whatever we do, we do in love. Sometimes love calls for tough measures, always trusting first in Christ. One thing we learn as we move ahead with the blessings and challenges of being a community is we know that the gospel reading today and the, is the power of Almighty God is unmatched that we learn today. And that we trust in the Lord no matter how challenging or confusing things get, we know that victory in Christ is assured, that God's power is greater than any demon. We need not fear, but rather boldly and lovingly join together with all of God's children, including and sometimes especially those on the margins and those who marginalize them, recognizing that sometimes those people are us.
Let us pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, help us always to recognize our own need for your gracious presence, that we might always share it as well with those on the margins of society. Help us to not be afraid and to recognize that we're in community with all of your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, as Jesus did with the demons, continue to bring, with the demoniac, continue to bring healing to those possessed by anything which separates them from you and from the community with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, continue to be with, guide, and strengthen all who suffer from the pandemic and those who care for them. Strengthen our leaders with wisdom that all may be vaccinated soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new beloved community, may the Spirit who holds us in the community of saints, one God, bless you now and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.